Bitcoin's encryption system is built on blockchain technology, which has long been considered virtually unbreakable. To reverse engineer Bitcoin's SHA-256 hash function, we would need roughly 10 to the power of 77 calculations. Even the fastest supercomputer today, capable of about 10 to the power of 18 calculations per second, would take tens of billions of years to finish. In other words, practically impossible, at least until now. In December 2024, Google unveiled a quantum processor named Willow. Willow's sudden arrival shocked everyone. Google announced that calculations, which would take conventional supercomputers 10 to the power of 24 years, could be solved by Willow in just five minutes. That's an unimaginably fast speed. But how is this even possible? To understand this, we first need to know how quantum computers operate differently from traditional computers. All computers we typically use process information using bits, the smallest units represented by zero or one. One bit can represent zero or one, while two bits can represent combinations such as zero, 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 one, one, one zero or one one. By combining bits, computers store and process various types of information. But quantum computers use a peculiar unit called the qubit instead of bits. A single qubit isn't limited to just zero or one. It can exist in a superposition. Doesn't that sound familiar? Think of a cat inside a box with a 50% chance of being exposed to poisonous gas. Until the box is opened, the cat exists in a state of superposition, simultaneously alive and dead. But the moment the box is opened, the cat settles into one definite state, Schrodinger's cat. Similarly, a qubit simultaneously holds both states, zero and one, hence the name quantum bit, or simply qubit, and it doesn't end there. When qubits are linked together, something even more extraordinary happens. Quantum computers don't just compute using a single qubit. They can perform every possible calculation simultaneously. Here's what that means. Imagine the equation one plus x equals what? A conventional computer using two bits must select one of four possibilities, zero, 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 one, one, zero, or one, one, to compute at a time. Inputting 00, zero yields 1, zero, 01 yields 2, and so on. Each scenario is calculated one by one. However, a quantum computer with two qubits calculates all possibilities simultaneously, all at once. This means that while a traditional computer must perform a calculation in four steps, a quantum computer can complete the same calculation in just one step. As the number of qubits increases, this difference grows exponentially. With three qubits, eight calculations can be processed at once. With 20 qubits, a million calculations can be processed at once. And what happens with 300 qubits? We could compute as many operations at once as there are particles in the observable universe. That's why quantum computers operate at speeds on a completely different level from conventional computers. Hartmut Nevin, founder of Google Quantum AI, described Willow's calculation like this. It lends credence to the notion that quantum computation occurs in many parallel universes, in line with the idea that we live in a multiverse. Just like Doctor Strange in Avengers Infinity War, looking into 14,605 futures in mere seconds to find a way to stop Thanos, something remarkably similar is happening right now inside this tiny chip. Quantum computers were first conceptualized by physicist Richard Feynman in 1982, and since then, IBM, Google, and numerous startups have attempted to develop them using different approaches. But they all ran into the same fundamental problem, qubit instability. Qubits are extremely sensitive to their surroundings. Even slight changes in temperature, electromagnetic waves, or tiny vibrations can cause them to collapse, a phenomenon known as decoherence. Because of this, quantum computers require massive, specialized systems with extreme cooling and ultra-high vacuum conditions to function. Worse yet, the more qubits there are, the more rapidly computational errors multiply. Increasing the number of qubits while keeping error rates low, this has been one of the longest standing challenges in quantum computing. Here is why Google's Willow has captured so much attention. Google announced that as Willow's qubits expanded into 3x3, 5x5, and 7x7 configurations, error rates actually decreased by half. If this announcement holds true, it suggests the more qubits are added, the more stable quantum computers could become. Google's surprising announcement naturally made people wonder, if we ever reach the point where we can control vast numbers of qubits, wouldn't even the unbreakable encryption of today become vulnerable. Of course, this fear is premature. At present, Willow has only 105 qubits. To crack Bitcoin encryption, experts estimate it would take anywhere from tens of thousands to millions of qubits. In other words, quantum computing is still in its infancy. But from another perspective, what's scary is that its infancy has already begun. 
ENIAC, the world's first computer built in 1943, weighed 27 metric tons, took up an entire room, yet still needed several seconds just to do basic addition and subtraction. But now, look where we are. The same calculations that once required a room-sized machine are now processed in mere seconds on the smartphones in our pockets. This transformation happened in just a few decades, and once the first steps are taken, the only thing between infancy and maturity is time. Timothy Holabeek, an industry technical strategist at leading cybersecurity company DigiCert, estimates that this maturity could be achieved in as little as five to 10 years. 